Hello and welcome back to Dice Breaker, where I am being joined by uh, a very, very nice man called David, who's going to talk to me about the sequel to Undaunted Normandy, which you might have seen us play on a live stream between myself and Alex Lolis, but this one is set in North Africa. I'm going to hand over to David for a little bit of intro uh, as to what we're playing today. Yeah, so uh, like you said, this is Undaunted North Africa. So this is the sequel to Undaunted Normandy. It's a, a standalone sequel uh, where we move the action from France with the U.S. and Germans to North Africa, where we're focused on the, the Commonwealth's uh, long-range desert group and the Italian army is their, is their adversary in this game. And you're one of the designers on the project. That's right, yeah. So one of the uh, one of the two designers, the other one being Trevor Benjamin, who I worked with on on a couple of other games too. All right, cool. So in this game, we're going to be um, sort of it's a a mix between like tile based tactics, moving our squadrons around and um, firing into cover and all kinds of things like that. But we're going to be mainly controlling that through deck building mechanics. So we're we're both going to be playing with our own decks, which we're going to bolster and have dwindled down over the course of the game. Um, but do you want to do like a, a quick sort of summary on, on how this game works and, and uh, how we're going to be playing through this scenario? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like you said, you know, super high level. This is a sort of mashup of a deck builder with a uh, skirmish combat game. So we're each taking the role of basically about the size of a, a platoon leader, right? So a guy that's in, that's in charge or squad in this case of just a handful of guys, each with our own, own goals. Um, if people are familiar with Undaunted Normandy, one of the different things you'll see here is that in Undaunted North Africa, we're adding vehicles, and in the case of, of the Commonwealth, the LRDG, we're adding the ability to destroy objectives. So um, we'll each be using our own deck, our own unique deck, to add whatever guys we want to, to the deck so they come up more often, so that those are the guys that we're concentrating on in the uh, skirmish combat. We'll rely on a fairly simple... Um, core combat mechanism where we're just looking at things like distance away and cover to provide uh, the defense for our guys. And then we'll rely on other abilities to do things, like I said before, where we're destroying objectives or concealing or reconning the battlefield. So each card has its own um, unique set of abilities that each guy can, can use. And we'll be using those throughout the game to, to further our, our goals. So... This specific scenario, this is the second scenario in Undaunted North Africa, and we, we chose it to look at today because it's the first one in that game that introduces the, the uh, new vehicle uh, concepts. So I'll be controlling the Italians. I've got a, a medium tank. Um, my goal is to take my tank and my uh, riflemen and scouts and try to go out and control some of these objectives. Now I'm defending an airfield from a long-range desert group attack. And on the other side, you've got the, the uh, long-range desert group. They've come in, they've dismounted from their vehicles, and they're trying to move in and blow those, those three uh, uh, structures up. So they're trying to destroy two of the three, either the airplane, the hangar, or the fuel dump. So if I control two first, I win. And if you destroy two of those first, you win. Okay, and then I'm going to be destroying that using my uh, engineer's uh, sabotage ability, right? That's uh, or right. demolition ability, rather, which is uh, which is meaning essentially that I'm going to need to get him up close and personal to be able to do that, which is uh, I'm sure going to be difficult when you've got a massive tank patrolling around. <laughs> yeah, right. And this is, I mean, this is the core tension of the game, right? So you and I both know that you need your engineer to get up there, but before he gets there, your scout has to scout the area for him. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be supported the entire time by your sniper, who's great at, at uh, targeting my personnel, or your anti-tank rifleman, who's great at targeting my tank. So, yeah, you'll have the tension of needing all, literally all four of those guys to, to kind of forward your, your goals. All right. Okay, so um, let's kick things off. So, uh, obviously, it's been a little while since I've played um, on so I'm going to be leaning on Jack for, uh, for a few bits of... Uh, uh, rule refreshes, but I'm sure that will help out all you guys at home watching anyway. Um, so how do we kick this thing off? Yep, so the scenario tells who has initiative, so that's here. It only, initiative only comes into play, this initiative token only comes into play if we tie on our initiative. So the way we start is we'll each draw four cards mm -hmm. from our deck. Uh, we're going to choose one of those cards to play for initiative. Now the initiative value is in the upper left hand corner of the card. And generally speaking, the better the card is, the higher the initiative value. So you're either playing it for initiative to win, but then losing the option to, to use the card, 
or you're going to you know potentially play a lower initiative card and then uh, have the the drawback of going second probably. Okay. And it's a good it's a good time to remind people that if one of your uh, soldiers is targeted and hit successfully, the card would first come out of your hand. So you have the potential of losing cards permanently from for the game. Yeah, so it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it goes from your hand, then from your discard, then your deck. And then that's if you if you cannot find a card, then that, that squadron is basically removed from the game. Yeah, and you know, that's a, that's a really good point, too. Uh, for the people who have played Normandy, um, there's one more important distinction between this and that. So in this game, each token on the board represents a, a unique guy. And in Normandy, it, it represented a group of guys, with each card representing a guy. So... If a guy comes off the board in North Africa, he can never be put back on the board. Mm. Okay. So once he's once he's gone, he's gone. Okay. Is that the, is that the same for your uh, your side of the? Conference yes. As well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Token represents a guy. Okay. I've played my. Oh, so we have a little yes card instead. Yeah. Okay. So I've just played a fog of war. So I've just got one, okay. which means we've tied. We've tied. So you so you'll win initiative. You'll play first since you started with initiative. Okay, so um, so I can play these cards in any order, uh, and then they each have at the bottom of their cards sort of a, a list of actions that they can do. And then the number associated with them is, is essentially how many times that action triggers. So, for example, I could use uh, my lieutenant here to bolster three. So when I'm doing that, I'm going to um, essentially choose um, the uh, sort of like units that I have in play and grab some more cards of their type so that I can use them more often in my deck. Like a standard sort of deck builder, I'm going to be sort of like purchasing essentially cards uh, to use in my deck. But in the other way, I could use the command half, which I believe is to use other unit types instead, is that? You would, uh, and the, the command is uh, draw two cards from the top of your deck and add them to your hand immediately. Well, well you, that's really good actually, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the other option is, uh, and the Warren Officer has this for you, is Inspire, which allows you to replay a card you've already played that turn. That's the one I was thinking of, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I think I might actually use that command straight away, just because I've got a bit of a rubbish hand. Uh, so I'm going to grab some more cards, see what I've got. All right, interesting. So, um, let's... I'm guessing Stalk is like an, an alternative version of movement. Yeah, so Stalk allows the sniper to move into a, a, a space that's not yet been scouted. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also just move into a space that's been scouted Correct. away. Correct, yeah. yeah okay. that's right. So I'm going to move my sniper up into these sort of defensible hills. Um, and then sort of scouting, I'm not sure if we, if we talked about it yet, but scouting is essentially a mechanic in which if you move into territory that's unscouted, you're going to take these Fog of War cards, which are essentially duds. Um, that will sort of like haunt your deck a bit, uh, and then you'll need to use. I think you use the scout itself to to get rid of those as well. Yeah, yeah. Any any character that has a, the recon ability, you mm -hmm. you would have to have that character play his recon, and it has to be in your hand at the time. The fire war comes out of your hand; it's removed from the game, and you get to draw a card from your deck to replace it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at the same time, I think I'll also move up my anti tank rifleman. Uh, and they're just going to join the sniper over here in this sort of defensible space. And then I'm also going to use my warrant officer here to bolster. So a pretty strong starting hand once I've mm -hmm. drawn the yeah. different command. Uh, so I'm going to get some more engineer cards, I think. And they go straight into my discard. That's right, yep. Uh, and then my last card is Fog War, so over to you. Yeah. And then one thing we should say is, again, for people who are familiar with Normandy, in that game, each player has symmetric decks available to them. Now, each scenario usually provides a different um, composition of that deck. But this is extremely different, right? So all of your guys are unique with their own combination of, of, of abilities, and the same is true for mine. So a lot of mm -hmm. asymmetry built into the two decks. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, tank driver. So he's going to drive the tank. Now, for people who aren't familiar with it, I'm just going to talk about uh, the, the vehicle real quickly. So I've got a tank here. Uh, my tank driver is in the drive position of the tank. That means that I can use either any of the actions on the card itself, um, or I can use the actions that are associated with his position in the vehicle. So he's got two different actions. One is drive one, so he can move the tank one space, and the other is control. So if the tank was on one of these structures, he could take an action to control that 
that space. Um, I'm then going to take the tank commander and I'm going to grab a driver and a crewman. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the squad leader to grab a rifleman and a scout. So this is, uh, so you'll see that on the bolster card for the squad leader, they've got two A, which means they need to bolster from squad A. Um, so you can um, end up in scenarios where you've got multiple squadrons that each have their own sort of chain of command, which was a, a big thing in Normandy as well, I think. Yeah, and, and you'll notice that the LRDG don't have that restriction. So you had a yeah. warrant officer that can inspire, and he can inspire anybody. So it's a, they, the uh, Italians have more command cards in this game, but the LRDG has a lot more flexibility in their cards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the turn complete. So we'll draw up for the next game. Okay, so I've already exhausted my deck yet, so I'm just going to do a quick reshuffle. Two more. So once again, we're going to choose our initiative card. Um, just a reminder that initiative is the number at the top left here. But I think I'm going to grab this one here. Okay. No, yep. Yeah, yep. yep. it's Fog of War, so it's going to stay with me. <laughs> Not uncommon early in the game to play Fog of War, then late game you're desperate to win it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think right at the start we're just sort of like moving moving up, but when, when it gets into the thick of it and it depends on who's actually going to be shooting first, that's mm -hmm. when it's going to get a bit more deadly. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use my scout card here. Um, to use their scout ability. So when the scout moves, essentially they scout anything that they land on that hasn't already been scouted, I think. That's right, yep. So I can scout two, which means that I can move uh, this scout one, two, like this, um, and actually scout this uh, this command point, which I need to, to blow up at some point in the future. He's in a bit of a risky situation because that um, tile itself has no defense, um, but hopefully I should be able to to get that squared away in the future. I'm also then going to use my engineer here to uh, move up one space. And then I think I'm going to take a pop shot at your tank. I know it's incredibly long range, but you're in a zero spot, so I might as well. Mm -hmm. So anti-tank means I get to roll two dice, which is pretty handy. Yeah. Um, so when we attack, we're going to basically add up all of the things that make it difficult to hit you, which is the the armor on the unit itself, the armor on the tile, and then the range. So I'm currently one, two, three tiles away. Um, there's no armor on the tile, and then you have five armor itself, so that's an eight. So I need to roll an eight or better on uh, one of the two dice that I'm rolling here. We always roll D10s. So let's give it a go. Oh, good rolls for me. Oh, bad rolls for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's two misses, so that's the end of my go. So yeah. and, uh, and just don't forget your fog of war for scouting. Um, oh, I see, right, yeah, of course. So I scouted one tile, so I pick up a fog of war and add it to my discard. I'm going to have my machine gunner uh, advance into this position with okay. the rifleman. And... Um, my tank crewman. Now, this is always the dilemma. I can either try to suppress you, right, mm -hmm. or attack you. Uh, I can attack with two dice or suppress with, with four. Uh, and then the other, the other issue is, do I try to target this engineer who I know is, is critical for you to win or pin your scouts so you can't move around the board anymore? This is always the dilemma. I think I'm going to start by... Um, I'm just going to attack your engineer. So it's one, two, three, four, nine. Ah, I'll suppress him. <laughs> <laughs> Math. There we go. That's a, All right. that's a 10 and a 9, so that's uh, two dice that gave you a hit there. Yeah. And so he's just suppressed. We just flip him over, and now you'll you'll have to play his card to flip him back over to his yeah. not It's essentially like a sort of stun mechanic. You're right. Yeah. Okay, was that your turn? Yep, that's it for me. All right, so let's draw more four. Okay. Ah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. 
I'm going to play this card here on my initiative. Okay. I've got a two, so I'm going to retain that. Um, and then I'm going to unflip my engineer. And I'm also going to play a secondary engineer card. So, demolition, I need to be on the space to. That's right. I'm, I'm yeah. um, so, at that point, it would probably be prudent to move him onto the space. But then, obviously, if I do that, then I'm a bit of a sitting duck, which is always the issue. OK. Um, yeah, I'm going to actually, before I play that card, uh, I'm going to play the left hand in here. And I'm going to draw two more to see what I get. Yeah, you got another engineer. Okay, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, play my engineer cards to, to move that engineer into the scouted space. Um, and then I'm going to use my warrant officer to oh, nice. inspire him so that he can then use his demolition. Perfect, um, yeah. So that is three dice, and I need to hit a six or above. Is that right? Yep. And that's determined by the card. Okay. Big money, no whammies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, God. Oh, Two wow. ones. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Horrendous. Uh, and then I've got Fog of War. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a yeah. great play that went went poorly quick. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> engineer. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my platoon sergeant to command two. Um, I am going to use. <laughs> That's interesting. I had this emotional roller coaster. I was ready, all ready to abandon this, and now I'm like, oh, maybe I should still try to control that. Um, let's use a scout to recon this fog of war. So I'll draw a new card for it. Mm -hmm. Then I'll use my scout to come up here. I'll take a fog of war. Then I'll bring my rifleman up. And my tank crewman is going to suppress your engineer. You're about to shuffle. Yeah, I'll suppress your engineer. Okay. Okay. I'll do you. <laughs> You're taking all the nines. This isn't bad. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Okay. So I'm going to reshuffle my deck. So is this um, this module for tabletop Cinder? Is this going to be available for people to to try out at home at some point? Yep. So I think this week uh, Osprey is making this one available for everybody, and then there'll be a couple more that'll be available for reviewers. Sweet. All yeah. right. So look out for that. Um, and then Undaunted should be um, available pretty soon, I think. For, yeah, I think it's July 9th is the official release date. Perfect. Yeah. If you do want to um, see any more coverage of this, as I said, we um, myself and Lodi did a stream of the uh, the original Undaunted Normandy, um, which we had a great time with. I think when I first brought it up as an option, um, I think Loli saw the whole like, sort of World War II theme was like, uh, and I was like, look, you're a massive Deck Builder fan. I think you're actually going to really like this. So we ended up giving it a play, and she really enjoyed it. OK. I'm going to play this for an initiative here. So that initiative. Cool. And I'm regretting my recon in that fog of war because I need to get this tank moving. Um, so my tank driver, he has he can't drive anywhere. He's kind of hemmed in here. So uh, he's waiting for the scout to go ahead and do something. So the only thing he can really do at this point is just take a shot himself, his attack one. So he's going to target your engineer. So it's one, two. So he's sort of like popping out from the tank itself. Right, yeah, yeah. So I, I see that there's like tokens for each of the drivers. Is it possible to sort of take the crew outside of the, the tank as well? Yeah, so I, I could with my action, I could uh, move out of the tank mm -hmm. and he, then, he could, then he could move around. Um, even if the vehicle's destroyed. So one thing I, I've, I've neglected to mention is if you deal three damage, so the damage is tracked on the vehicle, mm -hmm. if you deal three damage to the tank, it's disabled and I can't use its actions. 
If you do five damage to the tank, it's destroyed, which means it's removed from the board. Each time you successfully hit the tank, you not only damage the tank, but you also get to choose one of the two people in the tank and, and injure one of their cards. Okay, cool. And because you yeah. don't have any kind of... Uh... Oh, no, you've got repair. Never mind. On the tank. Right, yeah. Yeah, the crewman does have repair, yeah. Um, is, that, is that to get rid of one token, or is that to... That's right, shift, yeah, shift yeah. Yeah, each time he takes a repair, he gets to recover one or remove one token. Okay. Um, yeah, and if I if I move out, if I let's say I play him to to move, uh, leaving the vehicle and entering the vehicle does not count as an action. So you would okay. just do that and then move around. Okay. So he's yeah he's just gonna take a shot. Uh, he's gonna take a shot at your engineer. So it's a one two seven. It's not bad. And I've been rolling hot. There we oh, go. My God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So annoyingly, I have an engineer in my hand. Oh wow! It's taken first. So that's Dude. that's really nasty. Yeah. And then my rifleman's going to control this, and my tank crewman is going to suppress your scout. He hits him. Another nine. My God. Yeah. I've got all the all the dice rolling. Slightly jealous with my uh, 81s that I've rolled. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've got a whopping two cards in my hand now. <laughs> so uh, I think my uh, anti tank rifleman is just going to try and uh, take a pop shot at your tank. Um, so it's going to be one, two, three, um, plus five is eight. And he's rolling two dice. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's better than one. Yep. Uh, and then guess what? It's my good friend, oh, no. War. Oh, no. Oh, it's a bad round for me. That the, um, the, the missing the demolition roll was just crippling. Yeah, that was, that was horrendous. Okay. Right. I'm going to play this for initiative. Okay. Three. My you've, six. You've taken it back. Yeah. I quite needed initiative at this point. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play my engineer to um, unsuppress him. And then I'm going to once again inspire with my warrant officer to nice. try a demolition roll. And I get three dice. And I need a six or better. They're in slow oh, roll. God, that's so <laughs> close to not being it. All right, sweet. So that is one objective point for me. That's right. Yep. So what, what's uh, sorry, I forgot to ask. What's um, the trigger for the end game in this? Yeah. So two points for either of us. So right now I've got one because I'm controlling this position. You've got mm -hmm. one because you've taken it. Now technically you could come here and blow this up and take my point from me, or you could go to the plane, obviously, for the other one. So okay, perfect. We're both basically. I'm fighting to grab grab the plane before you blow it up, and you could you could blow this up or that. Wait, and then I've got enough for the war, for it, so it's over to you. Okay, so let's. Um, I've just got a serious shortage of scouts here. I'm going to take two scouts. Um, I'm going to. Oh. I'll bolster a tank driver. I'm just going to bolster one. I don't need, I don't want a whole bunch of them. I want I'm glutting up my deck. And then the uh, machine gunner is going to uh, just attack your scout. Let's see, one, two. From here, is it? Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah, one, two. It's attack two. Yeah, I'll just attack him. So it's to be an eight. The scout will engine in. Uh, I'm attacking the scout. Oh, doesn't matter. Oh, and miss. There we go. <laughs> yeah, about time you got bad roll. <laughs> <laughs> right, next set hand. Um, and then we get all of that, and then we shuffle the rest. Okay. Currently, it's just the scout who's suppressed at the moment. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oof. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, it really makes you feel like a, um, like a tiny little commando group. There's, there's so much riding on every single token on the board. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to then play this for my initiative, which is a two. All right. Okay, so... Um, my lieutenant is going to bolster three. Uh, so I'm going to grab scout cards. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to grab two scout cards and a sniper card. Uh, then my sniper is going to attack. Uh, so he gets attack three. So he's pretty, he's pretty <laughs> good. Um, can you remember what conceal does? Yeah, conceal uh, forces me to take a fog of war and put it into my discards. So it just it. gluts up my deck. Okay, so it's kind of like a stealth mode. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So my sniper is going to take a pop shot at your scout. Um, so that is uh, one, two, plus five is seven. And he gets three dice. So I need a seven or better on one of these dice. Which is Ooh. a 10 and a 7, so that is a hit. And it's out of hand. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. That was a huge. <laughs> that was huge. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I have my engineer. Um, he is going to... See, the, right, the problem I have here is <laughs> if I move into 3B over here, then that's better... Um, Better cover, but it's directly next to your tank, which seems a yeah. bit dangerous. So I think and he could, gonna... and he could only move what's already been scouted too. Oh, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so he's going to move back into yeah. into this region here, um, and that is going to be my, my turn. So that was great. I, you know, I finally was going to be able to move my tank because I was going to scout this <laughs> spot. That's why I have this tank driver that can't do anything again. So I think one, two, six. He's going to take a shot at your scout. I don't really know what else. Oh, there it is. And then uh, my, my Fog of War. Okay, so that's going to come from my discard pile, I think. I oh, think no, no, I, I missed. I had I rolled a oh, six. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you needed a six. No, I, he has a six. I needed an eight. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, I forgot the range. Yeah. Yep. Was that your whole turn? Yep, that was it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, like it feels bad, doesn't it? Right, okay. I um, the sniper just ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Uh, I'm going to play this for initiative. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay. Okay, so All right, platoon sergeant, command to get the cards I need. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to play the <laughs> scout, and he's going to move here and then back. So he's just going to scout this space. Okay. Take a fog of war. Uh, that will let my tank driver advance. Mm -hmm. My rifleman can't really advance. So he's going to take a shot at your... Engineer, so one, two, three, eight. Oh, there it is. <laughs> a one. And then my crewman. Uh, I think that's Cox, but it's between a one and a seven, so it should be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my crewman's going to take a shot at your um, engineer. He's going to attack him. So it's two dice against, a, we say, a eight, right? There oh, we go. The tank attack, okay. Yeah, right, yeah, attacking from the tank. Okay, so yeah, that's a hit on the engineer, and that's Amazing. it for me. Okay, uh, none in my hand, so check my disco pile. Um, pretty sure there's one in there. Oh, where is he? There he is. So that goes into the, it goes from the disco pile second, and then the deck third, right? So Right, that's right. So he's gonna 
against that. So it's two engineer penalties already. Good lord. Okay. Is that your whole turn? Yep, that's it for me. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of my fog of war now. Um, oh, although, I oh, know I can't use my scout because he is suppressed, so I'm just going to play my scout to unsuppress him. Um, get rid of my fog of war, and then the anti-tank rifleman is going to... Ooh. It's either... See, I, I could attack... Either like your rifleman or scout or your tank. Mm -hmm. uh, I get two dice attacking the tank, but it's like I think it's one extra armor on top. So I can either get better odds on one dice or worse odds on mm -hmm. two. I think worse odds on two is probably for the best. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use my anti tank ability. So it's two spaces away. Uh, plus one is three. Plus five is eight. So I need an eight or better on two dice. Hmm. Oh, so nearly a ten. <laughs> <laughs> when this is all done, he needs some. He needs some target practice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that desert sun getting to the thing. Right. Okay. That's empty then. And I'm I'm putting on a clinic on how to not to deck build. I'm running seventeen cards now, so I'm fattening <laughs> my deck. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. That was it for. I had played first, so it's a new turn. Oh, of course you did. Yeah, my bad. All right, so let's draw up. Yeah, I think that. Well, the interesting thing about this game is that, like, fattening your deck also means that you have more health. You know, because mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, yep, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it really it. is a you know, the, the tension of okay, well, I really need this guy to come up, but everybody has to stay alive, and <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Okay, I'm going to play this for initiative. Three? Uh, I've got one, so you're going to keep it. Okay, let's have the scout recon this fog of war. So I'll draw up for him. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So he's going to move two spaces and take two fogs to add to my other fog. <laughs> All right. That's you it for me. All right. So I've got a very scouty turn coming up. So I'm going to use scout card here. Um, he is going to scout two. So he's going to scout both these spaces here and take two fog of war. Uh, then I have another scout card and he's going to scout this space as well. Uh, and just scout one, and then he's gonna. Oh no, actually no, I'm gonna scout both of these spaces. So he's gonna dip into these two hills here. So, so one, the... yeah, and one thing just just to kind of mention it, um, you started here, right? Yeah. So you took two actions. So you could go here and here, and then here and here. It, it depend if you want to scout these two. Oh, that's true. Scouting, yeah. But you're wind up, you'll wind up taking two extra fog of war, and you unless you're planning to go into these. Yeah. It's the, not worth it, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's very gentlemanly of you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I'll take those fog walls out of the deck then. So, or you'll wind up getting two at the end because of these two spaces. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to remember which one I've replaced now. <laughs> that was yeah. That was my initiative. So, just, yeah. yeah, two on top. Yeah, cool. All right, sweet. So, um, and yeah, he'll, so end, he'll end up here, right? Yeah, and then he's going to. Uh, Get inspired. Oh. oh wow! Here we go. Yeah, by the warrant officer, and he's then going to attack. Um, so I'm going to shoot you straight in the face. So I only need a five. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's just got the one. Has he for his attack? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So fifty fifty. Oh, oh of course. The dice what rolls continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, the scout's kind of he's done what he needs to do now. So. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't expect more of him. <laughs> mm, okay. Mm, oh, sorry, it's another turn. New turn again, because I had gone first again. Oh, I keep forgetting this. 
Just assuming that I'm going first every time. <laughs> Probably says more about me. <laughs> okay. All right, in that case, I'm going to play this for initiative. Okay. Ooh, actually, oh, no, wait a second. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to play this for initiative, actually. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to flip it to me. All right, so um, my scout is going to play Recon to get rid of this fog of war. Yeah. Draw a new card in its place. So, yeah, orig oh, of course it's a fog of war. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, I was going to say um, I was going to use the, the scout for his initiative value. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, then I could get a potentially a better card. Uh, so in that case, I'm going to use my sniper, um, and my sniper is going to attack your rifleman. Um, so that's going to be three dice at a six or better. Come on, bud. That'll do, yeah. There you go. All right, and out, and out of hand. Out of hand. Shout out to the sniper, the MVP of this so far. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's okay. It. So the tank driver is going to move here, and mm -hmm. then he'll be inspired to move here. Okay. It's a bit scary. Can we engineer, um, engineer to use uh, demolition on a tank by any chance? <laughs> he can. Yeah. 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 So the, he can demolition the tank. So you'd roll three dice against only the tank's defense. It doesn't get a cover bonus or obviously range since you'd be in the same space. Okay. But you have to be in the same space as him. So well, now, that would still now be one it's... One, right? I'll say that again? That, was, that would still be just one damage though, right? That's right, yeah. Okay, so probably a bit of gun-ho at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you probably want to just try to get here and blow that up, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, is that your sound? Sorry. Yep, that was it. Okay. I right, need a big draw now. <laughs> Classic. Okay, all right. Um, okay, I'm going to put this for initiative. Six. Okay. Right, so uh oh. <laughs> well, here we go. Can I get. I'm going to command two. Oh. All right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll advance the machine gunner. Well, oh. Yeah, that's fine. Well, no, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> doing a little dance there. He's going to suppress your engineer. Oh, God. I guess the full four. Uh, yeah, yes. there we go. Yeah. All right, so he suppresses him. I oh, will advance nice. the rifleman. The scout will take a shot on your sniper, I guess. One, two, three, four. Wow, that's a 10 shot. Okay, awesome. Uh, and I'll just take a shot on your scout. Yeah. Okay. And then the tank driver will advance into position to control... Oh dear. That's it for me. I need, to, I need a big turn here. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's see what we've got. You so, know, if the anti tank rifleman had hit any of those shots throughout the course of the game, it would have been helpful. Yeah, it would have been really helpful. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, hmm. okay we're going to play our left hand to uh, draw two new cards. Mm hmm. It's not great. <laughs> um, all right, then my scout is going to recon this fog of war card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's another fog. Oh no! Oh my god! Okay, so I have to play my energy just to flip him back over, uh, and then I guess my sniper. I mean, can I? Can I still attack the tank with? I'm guessing you no. Need no, it's the only it's the only vehicle in the game that can't be attacked with a normal attack. So everything else is like light vehicles, trucks, and stuff. Right. But the 
but it is immune to normal attacks. Okay. Um, guess I'm just going to have to try and shoot your rifleman with my sniper. It's going to be pretty deadly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not good for him. <laughs> just five with three dice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. Okay. So now I just need you to draw really badly. <laughs> yeah. Now you're desperate to win initiative, right? Yeah. So I'm going to play this for initiative here. Seven. Six. Oh, that's that's oh, it. That one's harsh. Yep. Good job, Tank. Cool. Yeah, shout out to the tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can we can pin this one on your anti-tank rifleman. He just didn't. Oh, he's he's oh. fun. Absolutely. <laughs> I wish it was one of the ones that could give him some real punishment. But yeah. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much for uh, for playing that through with me, Chad. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah so thanks. Um, is there any other sort of details that you want to give out to the people watching the video at all? Or? Oh, let's see. Um, I'll just say that, you know, uh, obviously what, you know, what we played here, like I mentioned before, long range desert group. So if people don't know, this was a group that, um, operated behind enemy lines. Uh, they did a lot of reconnaissance work, but they, in the, in this game, we're really focusing on what they called beat ups, which is they would go in and, you know, attack a small, like an airfield or, a, you know, maybe a small fort or something like that. Uh, these quick sort of hit and run. So you'll see a lot of that kind of thing in the game. Um, I already mentioned, you know, the, the the fact that every one of the the guys in the game is is unique. So it's a, super asymmetric. Uh, lots of different scenario objectives that are probably a little bit more diverse than what was in Normandy. Um, and it follows the, the long-range desert group through North Africa for a couple of years. So all the scenarios are based on, you know, real events. And so you'll see them moving all throughout Libya, etc. So, sweet. Yeah. And we also have, um, if you head on over to dicebreaker.com, then our editor in chief, Matt Jarvis, has done a uh, a review on the game as well. Um, so, if you want to hear our sort of like detailed thoughts on on the sort of official Dicebreaker opinion of the game, I had a great time though. Um, I'm a really big fan of the Untaunted sort of like series that this is becoming. Um, so, uh, thanks very much for playing it through with me. How many um, scenarios are in the in the book for those? There's uh, eleven. Eleven scenarios to play through, yeah. and then they can be done multiple times. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the you know the obvious thing is a lot of people like to play them twice back to back and just switch sides. Um, yes. So that's that's a very different. You know, if you you know imagine how different it feels playing on the Italian side in this scenario versus that. Yeah, game. especially I think in comparison to the the original game where it's just sort of like you're on different sides of the pitch, but there's a slight bit of asymmetry. But with this, there's such a huge yeah uh, yeah like difference between the the two play styles. I think it'd be really interesting to to flip perspective on this one. All yeah. right, so thanks very much for playing with us, Jack. Um, we will pop some links in the chat for anyone who wants to have a look at um, some more info on Undaunted, as well as our review on the website. Um, please head on over to uh, to any of the... Oh, my brain's melting now. <laughs> to any of the coverage that we've done before as well, so if you want to see our Undaunted Normandy Let's Play, as I said, that's on the YouTube channel now. Thanks very much, Jack, for joining us. Um, and this has been Dicebreaker on YouTube. Head on over to our page. If you're not watching on there already, youtube.com forward slash dicebreaker. Give us a subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we put a video live. Uh, we stream every Thursday at about 3 p.m. BST, which is British time time, so come and join us for some more games on there. And uh, also head on over to dicebreaker.com for some more editorial content as well. Thanks very much for watching, and have a lovely day. <laughs>